Okay, because obviously right. I do do this very um, make host. Okay, all right. I'm shutting up. Everybody have a good call. All right, Courtney, I just love you. Thank you so much for getting on here. Um, first off, you literally spit fire in, into me. I know personally, I rewatch your Zoom. I follow you every single day. You keep me going. You're somebody that I look up to so much. So I'm so thankful that you are doing this for us. And I'm cheering Kenzie on 100%. Yes. <laughs> <I love her. laughs> so I'm just going to let you roll with it, guys. If you haven't heard Courtney speak, ever you're in for a treat today and she's gonna give you tough love and she's going to tell you how it is and you're gonna leave here fired up 100 percent i'm gonna try not to cry because i'm so emotional like these last um 90 days have just been a roller coaster of emotions with like everything that's been going on in the world. And I'm going to tell you, I know Amanda said this and I agree with her 99.999% of what she said, but there is, there are some teams that are not experiencing momentum right now. And so, um, a lot of teams are, and like she said, it's the people that are showing up. You know, I know other people's numbers and I am very competitive. I want all of my sisters to win. Please know that. Like, I love my side sisters, um, but I'm competitive. Like, I love whenever my team's popping off. And I like to be like, I like to know the pulse of our industry. And I know some people don't have the pulse of their team right now. And so you should be really proud that you do have the pulse of the momentum and you know what's happening. You are showing up. Um, I'm really excited. So I'm just going to start talking. I have notes. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. Just know I do cuss. Um, so if you have children around, that's your own problem. I'm just letting you know right now. I love you, but I get really fired up. Um, and so at your discretion, have your kids around. Because one time I did a Zoom for y'all, and this lady messaged me afterwards, and she was so cute. She's like, I love you, but my kids have never heard the F word so many times. I'm like, I am so sorry. She was so sweet. She wasn't mad. But she was like, I'm just so fired up. It was really cute. Um, and I'm like, awesome. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm just going to go over my notes and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, you know, this is the third month in a row that I've had a team go 200K. And when I have a team go 200K, it is like me going 200K all over again. And so I want to share with you my emotions, my focus. You have six days left of this month. That is plenty of time to hit whatever you're going for. So I'm going to talk to you about that at the end. Um, so I'm just going to talk about several different things. Um, like I said, please ask questions if you have them. No question is dumb. Like, I am here just to love on y'all and fire you up. Um, so I want you to decide right now, are you walking this month faithful or fearful? Because where faith exists, fear cannot. And so you have got to decide what are you going to cling to right now? There are scary things that happen. There are scary things in the world. There are scary things in your business. Maybe you're not on pace for where you're, you know, what you're trying to go for. Who gives a shit? Are you going to walk in faith or are you going to walk in fear? I decided um, December of 2018, I was going to walk in faith and it didn't matter what happened. I reached out to Amanda. Amanda was such a saving grace for me and my team. It didn't matter if the wheels fell off and the motor fell out. I decided I was going to walk in faith. I decided that I knew what I was made for. I knew that I am not better than anyone, but I work harder and I knew that I just had to have faith and I just had to keep putting one foot in front of the other. So I want you to think of those two words right now and think about your emotions that you're experiencing. And I want you to make a decision to tie your emotions to one of those words. You know, I, someone told me recently, if you're going to worry about it, don't pray about it. And if you're going to pray about it, don't worry about it. And man, I was like, damn, you are so right. It, it, there's just not room for both of those things to exist. So is your mind right? Are you holding yourself accountable by doing the work, um, by showing up? Y'all, I will tell you right now, I show up every single day. I show up every single day. Like I need this, like I need food to put on my table. You know, some of the stuff you may have heard me say before, but I'm just going to say it again. I envision this as I need it to keep my lights on 
because it pays my light bill. I envision this as I need it to put gas in my car because where do you think I pay for my gas from? My Lavelle income. I, I, it's my roof over my head. It is the water in my bathtub. It is the new school clothes on my kid's body. This is my everything. Okay, I'm all in. I don't have time to call in sick on myself. I don't have time to hit snooze on my dreams. I don't have time. There are too many lives out there that need to be changed. Y'all, I've been here for almost three years and I have the same sense of urgency that I had from day one. When my alarm goes off in the morning, bet I don't like it but I love what I do. I'm not a morning person. I never have been. I'm a night out. I love to stay up late. It doesn't matter. I know that a successful person is disciplined and I know that they get up before the rest of their house, period, end of story. What are you going to do these next six days? Maybe you sleep till 10. Maybe you own your own time. I'm going to challenge you from someone who hates mornings. Set your alarm and get your ass up and get out of bed. I promise you, you will never regret getting up early. You will never regret getting up before for the rest of your house, you will never regret that. But you've got to hold yourself accountable. No one is going to come knock on your door and be like, hey, you know, get up a couple of hours early today. Like, it's just not going to happen. I have a neighbor that does this with me now, and she gets up at 3.30 every morning just to work her business. It's all a choice. We have the same 24 hours in the day. You can tell me how busy you are all day long. I don't care. I'm not being rude. I don't care because it's not about your schedule. It's the same thing when someone tells me Thrive's too expensive. You think I sit there and like argue with them? No, they don't value it. It has nothing to do with how much Thrive costs. It has everything to do with where they're willing to spend their money, right? Same thing. Where are you willing to spend your time? You busy? Get up earlier go to bed later. I didn't get into this having all of the time in the world. Whenever I started this, I worked 12 hours a day. A lot of you that know me know this. I worked 12 hours a day. I had 12 kids in daycare and six of them were in diapers. Guess what? I did not want that to be my reality. I did not want to look up a year and be like, okay, like I've basically just been treading water, right? And you want to know who inspired me to get my ass up early is Amanda. Amanda started doing those things with your team, your uh, power hours. And you want to know that my team does 10 of those a week now, come hell or high water. The only time we don't do them is on Christmas day. And that's it. Maybe Easter, but Easter's on Sunday. So it's Christmas day. That's it. Every single morning, Monday through Friday, every single evening, Monday through Friday. In fact, my team's on one right now. There are hundreds of women and men that show up and plug in because they have chosen to get their mind right. It's a choice for you. It is a choice. You have to decide what are you going to choose. Um, what do I do every day? Every single day, I set my alarm. I get up. I do my three steps and I show the world me doing my three steps every single day without fail. Doesn't matter. You know, on Saturdays and Sundays, I sleep in. I um, usually sleep till like um, 10. I do on Saturdays and Sundays. It's my day to sleep in. Doesn't matter. I still show my three steps on my story every single freaking day. Every single night, you go to my page, you know what my nightstand looks like. It's right here. Boom. You're going to see me taking my balance, putting on my recharge every single night. I'm in people's face. They have to ask me, what is that? Right? They're, they're going to ask me, what is that? That is the energy I put out. But if I don't show up and do that every single day, where the hell is someone going to buy from somebody who's not consistent, someone who's not disciplined, somebody that maybe takes care of their health Monday, Wednesday, and Friday? Not me. Not me. I'm going to do that every single day. You cannot find a big enough excuse for why I wouldn't. Your kid's sick? Cool. You probably really need your three steps. You got to get up early because you have a big meeting at work? Awesome. Bet you're going to be thriving. There's no reason why you cannot go and put your three steps on your story every single morning. I post three times a day, every single day. You will never catch me not posting ever. Why? That is my business. That is where my doors are open. That is where I am making an impact on this world. I don't get up and think I need to get, I need to get a customer. I need to get a promoter. No, I need to get up and make a freaking difference. And guess what? People are in my inbox. People are messaging me. What are you using? I have girls that literally are like, how much is it? I don't even care what you do. 
I just want to be around you because I'm cool. No, because I'm consistent. I'm positive and people are drawn to like, that is sexy to people. That is sexy to people whenever they are like, oh my God, this person shows up no matter what, you know, people want to be around winners. They want to be around people that are disciplined. Um, and I, I'll get to that in a minute. Sorry. I'm interrupting myself. I do that a lot. Um, I want to ask you what keeps Target running. What keeps Target running is a whole lot more than that cashier checking out that person and putting cash in the register. That is like such a small piece of what keeps Target running. Who's cleaning the aisles? Who's restocking? Who's hiring? Who's firing? Who's training? Who's, um, you know, going and checking the bathrooms? Who's doing the ordering? Who's unloading the trucks? Guess what? That's you. That's you for every single thing that needs to be done in your business. So if you are hanging your hat up at night and you are, you know, basing your worth on did you enroll someone or did you not stop it now? You will beat yourself up and you'll never be good enough. That is something I wish if I could go back to day one, I could tell myself is it doesn't matter court. Yeah, I want to change lives. Yeah, I love to get a lot of people in the computer, but what matters most is what I am like, I'm marrying that action and divorcing the res results. I can't determine if I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to enroll 20 people or if I'm going to enroll no one. I, I have no control over other people. I have control over me. And so are you going to be the person, you know, all of those things for your business? Or are you just the person that checks people out at Target? Because guess what? your business won't work. It won't run. You've got to do all of those other things. Are you interacting with people? Are you building relationships? And, and is this easy? Hell no, this isn't easy. No, this isn't easy. It's not easy, but it's worth it. It's so effing worth it every Tuesday when I open up my paycheck. Are you kidding? Like, but it's not easy. It takes a lot of work. It's the easiest hard work you'll ever do though. You have got to know this is running your own business. I, I am Courtney. I am Courtney who owns and runs an $11 million organization. There ain't nothing easy about this. And if that's what you want, if that's what you're preparing yourself for, it is equivalent to you going and buying a cycle studio, but guess what? You're doing it at home in your PJs for yourself, something you can pass down to your kids, but it's going to take that same dedication, that same consistency, that same, I'm going to show up every mother effing day. Even when Chick-fil-A is closed on Sunday, I bet you somebody somewhere in Chick-fil-A is doing something. Somebody is, you can't tell me somebody's not working in a warehouse or in um, a party plan. Like there's somebody somewhere, right? People don't just shut down and expect for things to still run. There are things behind the scenes that always need to happen. Um, is quitting on the table for you at all? Do you ever feel like quitting? I used to. You want to know what I equate quitting to? I equate quitting to whenever things get hard as a mom, quitting being a mom. That's what I equate quitting to. So if you ask me now, if I ever think about quitting, I would tell you as often as I think about going and taking my kids and getting rid of them, which is never. Okay. I signed up for this. I'm all in. I make gangster money. I change so many lives. This is not even on the table. Do I have a bad day? Absolutely. Do I ever think, damn, yep, but I don't allow those thoughts to exist in my world. Literally, those are a choice. Your negativity, your doubt, your fear, all of that, it's a choice. It is a choice and you've got to be smart enough to go, I, like, I'm not listening to that bullshit. I am not talking. Would you tell someone on your team those things? Would you go, oh, yeah, okay, Amanda, <laughs> probably not going to happen this month. Hell no. You might have like a realistic conversation, but you're not going to sit there and be like, oh my God, Amanda, are you ever going to sign somebody again? No. Like why the hell would you tell yourself those things then? You've got to be so positive and just know, I've said this before, you may have heard me 
sorry, I feel like I repeat myself and maybe some of y'all have never heard me. You have to envision success in that next life. Like you're going to change. I envision it like I'm a little kid and like I am playing hide and go seek with my cousins. I know they're in the house. I know I'm going to find them and they're going to jump out and they're going to scare the shit out of me when I least expect it. That's how success works y'all. But you have to keep going. You have to turn that next corner. You have to go look in that next hiding spot. You've got to do that work or you will never find it. You have got to get up. You don't know who, you don't know when, you don't know how. You have no idea. I I like to think and I like to believe that I have people that will be millionaires on my team that aren't even conceived yet, okay? They haven't ever even been made by their parents, right? I plan on being here in 18 years. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I, okay? And if maybe you're like, I don't know if this is for me, like you need to log off right now and go have a talk with yourself in the mirror because like you are in such a prime, you are in the driver's seat. Like you are driving the Ferrari of premium grade nutrition. You have your hands on freaking gold. Are your checks always gonna look like that? No, but if you let your check determine your work ethic, your mood, you have it backwards, okay? Your work ethic, your mood, your consistency, your discipline, that all, it will determine what your bank account looks like. But you don't get to wake up and be an asshole and, and you know, to yourself because you aren't where you want to be. Does that even make any sense? No, it doesn't. So take quitting off the table. It shouldn't even be a thought. It shouldn't even be like it shouldn't even cross your mind. Okay. It should be as absurd to you as someone walking up and going, your kids are bad today. Don't you want to give them away? No, I'm not entertaining that bullshit. Right. But you've got to decide how you view quitting in your mind. Is it an option or is it absurd to me? It's absolutely freaking absurd. Okay. Um, hold on. Teamwork. You have got to learn when it's not your turn to cheer for your sisters. That is so important. I can't tell you how important that is. If you are not cheering for your sisters, if you are not high-fiving people, how are you going to have a team? If you can't cheer for the people next to you, how do you think God is? I'm serious. Like, if you don't believe in God, sorry. But I believe that God is sitting there waiting to answer your prayers. And if you are praying for a team and you are resentful and you are um, jealous and you have envy, and why would he bless you with people that can out hustle you? It doesn't make any sense. You are blocking that blessing. I see, and I have experienced it on my team before too. Like, seriously, we cut that shit out. I am like, you know what? Sorry, Jesse, you're a guy. I'll try to throw in the word guy too. Sorry. Um, I saw, I've seen girls that are like, oh my, and I'm like, why are you not high-fiving your sister? And they're like, oh, you know, I'm like, no, like we don't allow that at all because if it's not your turn, it's just not your turn. But I think when I look at Amanda, when I look at Jamie, when I look at Kaylee, when I look at anyone that's killing it, I'm like, what are they doing? I'm not like, what are they doing? I'm like, what are they doing? Like, I want to learn. I remember Amanda telling me and Jamie telling me like they had million dollar months and I was like, bet, like bet, like I'm here for that. I, I want to be like them, right? I'm not intimidated. I'm inspired. And so if your sisters are, are winning and your brothers are winning, your upline, your downline, your sideline, whatever it may be. I pray for people that out hustle me. I want people to come and smash past my personal records. Why? That's what I want to duplicate. Okay. But if you're not clapping for others, I promise you people notice and you're making yourself look like an asshole. Okay. Be inspired. High five. Cheer them on. Ask them questions abundance is such a beautiful thing. I had a lady once, okay, this is not my proudest moment, but I'm going to share it with y'all. I had a lady once, it was in November of 2017, and she came in, and she joined my team, and she ran straight to 4k as fast as I could blink, and then she messaged me. She's like, hey girl, had a better opportunity come along, and I'm like, what? Like, you haven't even got your first paycheck. Like, you just went 4k. Like, anyways, I found out where she was going and I thought it'd be really, really classy to send the person that stole her from me this like nasty message of, oh, oh you can't steal all my people, huh? You know, and she goes, honey, go research abundance. 
I'm so glad she said that to me because I had such a small mindset back then that I thought, well, there goes my chance at winning. That was my A player. No. Like, are you done? If you go get an A player, are you done? If you go get a runner, if you go get someone that blows and goes, are you done? You better not ever be done. You better be looking for that next life to change. You do not get afforded with like success to sit there and be selfish. You must remain selfless. And that was a huge wake up call was like, Courtney, it's just $4,000 in volume. You want a team so big, so mighty that a $4,000 dip in sales doesn't even like F with you, right? It, it just, it really like punched me in the gut. And it was one of the best lessons I ever learned. And I appreciate that she called me on my shit because ever since then, I have such an abundant mindset that I'm like, if not, you know, this person, this person, but I'm not sitting back waiting for somebody to make me, right? I'm looking for the next person that wants to do this with me. Um, and I'm never done. I'm never done. I could prop my feet up every Tuesday and make anywhere from twenty to sixty thousand dollars a week for probably a long time. Because there's some really badass girls on my team that have caught the vision. Will I ever? Hell no. I've enrolled over twenty five people this month. I'm not done. I'm not done until I literally cannot anymore. Why? Because I'm selfless. You have to remain in that servant, selfless state of mind where there's abundance, there's enough for everyone, and you're going to take everyone with you, and you're going to watch your sisters go there with you, and you can't wait to walk across the stage and hug, you know, someone that's not even in your organization whenever they become, I mean, I remember whenever y'all's girl twin became a millionaire, I was sitting there crying. Because I'm like, man, I shared a dinner with her when we were just babies in this business. We weren't even 200 Ks. I don't even know if I was an 80 K. And I just think like, wow, like there's so much room at the top. It, there's infinite amount of room. Okay. Um, so teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. We are all on the same team. We all have the same vision. We all have the same mission. Accountability also does not mean I need you to call me and wake me up. No, you need an effing alarm clock. I need you to, I need you to tell me if you see me not posting. No, that's not accountability. That's babysitting. Accountability is, hey, I'm showing up tomorrow to do this with you. Hey, you want to get up at nine and jump on the Zoom? I'm going to do this with you. Meet me there. Accountability is not somebody else's responsibility like for your actions. And so I see that so many times in this industry where people are like, I need an accountability partner. I need you to do this. I know you need to get up and you need to take ownership for your own success. If your sponsor left tomorrow, what would you do? What would you guess what my sponsor left? I became a millionaire. I couldn't wait to become a millionaire and laugh, right? You don't need anybody but your hustle and to treat others with kindness love and serve them. That's it. But nobody else is responsible for if you get up and show up, but you, I don't have time to go and wake people up, right? There's too many people that have already showed up that are hungry. Um, okay. Sorry. I'm going back to my notes or I'll like, just go off on a tangent. Um, consistency. Are you a seasonal employee or are you a business owner? You've probably heard me talk about this before. You've got to make that choice. Are you going to show up when there's bonuses? Are you going to show up when there's a trip? Are you going to show up and get what you want out of it and then go away? If so, you are hurting this industry. You are hurting yourself. And that's not what this is about. I, I will tell you that all day long. If you're just here to get the free trips, that's okay, cool. But like, what are you doing in between the trips? Are you here for you? Are you here? for a team because you will never make gangster money. You will never make that, that residual money, beach money where you're asleep at night um, and your numbers jump by $10,000 if you are not here to serve other people. So what does a seasonal employee look like? They get really excited when there's something good for them, okay? A business owner shows up when shit's hard. A business owner shows up whenever sales are down. A business owner um, shows up whenever there is shit hitting the fan. A business owner shows up when the toilets overflow. You dig? 
You get what I'm saying? They do the hard work. They show up when stuff stinks, okay? A seasonal employee, I don't hire seasonal employees. I don't want you around me. I don't understand how you can take time off from changing lives. I literally don't. One of people ask me all the time, how do you make a comeback? And I'm like, you need to go ask somebody else because I don't know. I've never stopped. And I don't mean that with any disrespect, but I literally, I don't know what to say to you because we are not the same. Okay. I have never taken a day off. I have never not gotten up and shared thrive. I just haven't. I don't like, how, how could I be so selfish? You know, um, I don't judge. I'm not sitting there taking inventory or role of other people's work ethic, but I can tell you, I can't relate to somebody that only does this sort of kind of half ass. I'm not a half ass person. I'm an all in because I want, I make good money. I want those phone calls to keep coming on Tuesdays where my girls are bawling, where mamas are coming home, where I just had one of my friends go buy her husband a boat. I'm like, you know, it's not all about the things. It's all about the, the opportunity. It's all about the circumstances that these women are going and creating for them and their family. Why would I take a day off from that? I'm sorry. You'll never catch me slipping. You'll never catch me not showing up because I do it for them. I did it for them before they existed though. I did it for them before I had a team of 11,000. I did it for them before I had one promoter on my team. I made it about other people. Why? You won't quit when somebody else is watching you. When you realize you're a role model, when you realize that you're being duplicated, whether you're coming to work with a shitty mindset or a positive one, you are being watched. You are being duplicated. Is how you're behaving and is your work ethic what you want duplicated? You have to stop and ask yourself that question. You will be duplicated no matter what. You know, people always say, well, is that duplicatable? Everything's duplicatable. Being a lazy ass is duplicatable, right? You've got to decide. I know that if I took my work ethic every day and found 100 people to work with that much like intensity, hell yeah, I want that. I want that all day, every day, but you have to decide. You have to decide what kind of example you are going to be. Um, I don't think of a calendar, okay? Sorry, I have to get a drink because I'm in the light. <laughs> I don't think of calendars, okay? I'm going to tell you when I got real serious. It was when my sponsor left and I thought he was going to take everyone with him and he told me I was made and all this shit. And I was like, you know what? Like I told y'all, if the wheels fall off, if the engine falls out, if I run out of gas, so what? Everyone could leave me and I could just be thriving for free with, you know, $200 in volume. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And I decided I went all in for 90 days. I didn't even think three months. It was one day I woke up and I told Jay, I said, no more bitching, no more crying, no more nada. Everyone can pack their bags and go, but I promise you, I'm not going to be negative. I'm not going to cry. It doesn't matter. I'm going to recreate. And that's what our customer group and that's what our team is known for is the word hashtag recreate. I am going to recreate what I know I can do. And I put my head down and I went and did the damn thing. I can't tell you how beneficial that was to me and my business. I can't tell you, I can't measure that for you. What I know is that ever since then, there was no looking back. I lost rank for five different months before that happened. Five different months. I haven't even been here three years. I made a million dollars, okay? I lost rank five different times. Do you think that ever felt good? No, you think I ever let it get me down? Fuck no. If you can get your rank back five times, that's pretty fucking impressive to me, right? Game on. Okay. So if you ever lost rank, who cares? Get your freaking big girl panties on your big boy panties and get over yourself. You will lose people. They weren't made for you. They weren't meant for that next chapter. That may sound, you know, cliche. What? I don't give a shit. It's the truth. Those people that get you to that first level, they're not the same squad and they will support surprise you. They will shock you. That quiet little person that barely, you know, scrapes by, they'll be your 40K. Like, I promise you, you can't control any of that shit. You can only control if you keep going. That's it. You get to control. Are you going to put your head down? Are you going to work? Are you going to run? Um, 
So 90 days. I just, I've told y'all this before. I know when I talk to y'all, 90 days, man, make tomorrow your day one. Like 90 days, all in. You're not going to wash your hair every day. You're going to, you're going to delete Candy Crush off your phone. I do that. I, I put it on there and then I delete it off. I'm guilty. I have my vices. I watched freaking Joe Exotic tiger king shit right but i knew like after that okay like no more netflix binge you got your fix let's go for 90 days i literally uh, like okay if this offends you i am so sorry but just know i have a really good heart i told my team like i am committed to leaving all you hoes on red like i will not deal with your bullshit i was like hashtag leave a hoe on red for the next 90 days you come up in my phone with anything but good morning sunshine let's go fuck this day up i'm not talking to you at all like i don't care you need prayers no i'm not a pastor like i love you i will pray but I, I got too much. Like you lose focus of the mission of the vision. I needed to realign myself. Like you're not allowed to ask for prayer requests in my team chats. And some people are like, you are such a bitch. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm focused. Like I'm focused. I love my people. I pray for who I need to pray for. I love you. But if I sat around and I collected prayer requests all day long, I would be one depressed mofo. Okay. I'm not doing that, man. I am literally 90 days. No bullshit. I will leave you on red. I will not come to your pity party. If I don't ever hear from you again, I literally, like, bye. Like, I, I, I'm done. That is when I stopped dragging people. How many of you drag somebody? How many of you help float people? How many of you are, like, keeping people at their ranks? Let them go. They are literally slowing you down. I do not give a shit what someone brings in volume. If their energy Fs me up, if their vibe is not right, I do not care. I have looked at girls before that were 12Ks on my team, and I'm like, you're negative. Go find somewhere else to do this. I can't fuck with this. And I have said goodbye. Y'all, that's how abundant of a mindset I have. And that's how bulletproof my team is for positivity, right? I will call if, man, that's one of the things you've got to learn right now, whether you have one people on your team or 20, if your homegirl's being negative, you have permission and you also have responsibility as a friend to not talk about them, to talk to them, message them, Kaylee, you're being negative. What the fuck's your problem today? What's going on? Talk to me. Let's go. Like we're not doing this, right? You, you've got to be that person that moves an organization, a team, no matter how big or small past those times, you've got to tell people what they don't want to hear all day long. You're going to have to tell them what they don't want to hear. That's growth, man. And that is the most uncomfortable shit you will ever do in your life. But I promise you it's boundaries, it's respect, and it is going to create something that is unstoppable. You want to know what my team did with COVID? We didn't talk about it. It wasn't allowed. You couldn't even say those words. I have ner I had people on my team that got it. I had ICU nurses on my team. We didn't talk about it. We just kept it out. We kept focused, we kept positive, and we kept going. Um, that's just so important in your organization that you keep that next positive step in front of that other one and you shut down anything else. Um, no, I don't think like y'all are negative or anything. I'm just letting you know shit I've dealt with and things I tolerated. I tolerated a lot because... I thought I was supposed to because I was a leader and these people were making me money and I didn't sit there and view them as a dollar sign. But at the end of the day, I realized, yeah, you are because you're putting up with shit that you wouldn't put up with from somebody that wasn't making you any money. So why are you, you know, allowing that kind of energy around you? I don't care if you have a team of a hundred people and only 10 of them are positive. You need to link arms with those 10 people and you need to run, you know, I like the saying, everyone can sit at my table, but not if you're negative. You can't be around me. Like you're not around, you're not allowed because I'll become negative. I'll start gossiping. I'll start the chitter chatter. It's contagious, right? It doesn't matter who you are. You have to decide what you're going to keep around you. You're responsible for your environment. Um, I will point anyone in the right direction. And I encourage you to do that as a leader as well. But damn it, they better be asking for directions, okay? It is not, I'm going to wake you up and I'm going to 
you know, point you in the right direction and get you walking each day. No, I'm here. What do you need? That is exactly how you've got to run your team. If not, you will be doing everything for everyone. And the number one thing that I've given my team is, um, um, this is so sweet. I have someone from a different company that's like, have you hit it yet? She's from It Works, but she went somewhere else. That's abundance, man. Like that's an abundant mindset. There is so much room in this industry for success. Okay. Um, last but not least, there are six days left in this month. Okay. Kaylee, I don't know who all's on your team and not on your team on this call. Here's what I'm going to say. Go fucking smash 200K. There is no reason for you not to smash 200K. I would tell you this. Kaylee deserves it. Y'all deserve that title. Y'all have almost gotten it before. You were too damn close to miss it, okay? Here's what I'm going to tell you. Do you have an opportunity live event scheduled every single day from now until the end of the month? If not, when you get off here right now, you better grab someone in your downline that's a 4K, that is a 12K, that's going 40K. I don't care. Grab someone, schedule it. I did one every single day of the week last month. Or like, sorry, that didn't make any sense. My family all walked in here and I get super distracted. Sorry. It's fine. Shut the door. Thank you. Um, I did one every single day last week. I challenge my leaders to do not pair up with a leader. Okay. Don't get a 12 K and a 12 K. Why? You're not duplicating shit. If you take two 12 Ks and you each grab someone you've duplicated, teach them to go and grab someone, teach them to go and grab somebody. Guys go do that. I promise you that has exploded McKenzie this month. That exploded. This is going to be, and I will say this because I'm really fucking proud of this. This will be in the last 90 days, the third personal 200K that I have popped. I don't even like the words I have popped. This will be the third personal 200K that has gone 200K on my team. They've done this, okay? Why? Because they knew they were too damn close. One girl had five days left in the month and I said, are you doing this or not? And she's like, eh. and I said, well, I won't tell y'all what I said to her because she's one of my best friends. But I was like, this is really going to hurt. Go make this shit happen and call me afterwards. And we made that shit happen, okay? Y'all are too close not to make this happen. I'm going to give you some ideas. Number one, there are still hours left in this day. I will tell you this, and you can think I'm being selfish all you want. I don't give a shit. Are you calling all of your customers that are on auto ship for the 1st of June? And are you telling them, hey, I know you're on auto ship for the 1st of June, but I can get you a really good deal today and it ends in an hour. Let me shoot you the info. Are you doing that? Are you doing that for this team? Right? Y'all can go 200K. Go each and every single one of you. It's going to take every single penny to move to 200K. Are you doing that? Are you utilizing any products that you have on hand? I know me and some of you may not do this. Whatever, this is what I do. Do you have extra balance? Do you have extra sculpts? Do you have extra DFTs? Are you utilizing those to close different things? Um, do you have credits? Are you rolling out credits? Let me ask you this too. If you have a team, of anybody, are you sharing those things? Are you going to the five people under you and going, hey, I have five bottles of Sculpt. Um, if you can bring in a three-step customer, first come, first serve, I will mail them a bottle of Sculpt. What, like pull together, pull. This is time to get scrappy. I will tell you right now, I love y'all. You are not going to have a walk-off home run, okay? Y'all are a little bit behind where you need to be. I promise you, I have seen teams that are behind where they need to be that do like 5K a day in sales, do $58,000 in a day in sales when they all decided it's motherfucking go time, okay? So I want y'all to decide because y'all deserve this so bad. Pull together everything you have as leaders. I, like I said, I don't care if you have one person under you or 10, share with them. I, I, like I, every month I write down, Here's what I have to leverage with. Here's my credit. Here's my placement I'm leveraging with. Here's my extra product that's in my, um, you know, pantry that I'm leveraging with. And I'm picking the people on my team, like whoever's pushing for a promotion. And I'm like, all right, Kaylee, I got, you know, 10 things for you. Roll it out to your team. Let's go. Let's move. Let's move that number. That number's manufactured. Okay. 
that number that y'all need to close is not a freaking Easter egg hunt where you've got to go find the golden egg. That is a number and you've got to go figure out how to manufacture that number. There are people out there that need Thrive. There are people out there that need a business, okay? You've got to figure out how to make that number move $100 at a time, okay? Get up like from this Zoom and go and bust ass. Y'all deserve it. Last thing I want to tell you, I don't know if I've taught your team this before or not, so bear with me, but this is really, really important today, tomorrow, and for the rest of your network marketing career. Are you working off of a rate of run? Okay, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I need you to write this down. This is where you will make a million dollars, okay? Rate of run, R-O-R. -R. Every single day, my girls tell me what their R-O-R -R is, okay? Your ROR is the speed in which you are traveling. Why is this important? I'm going to give you an example. Y'all know, y'all heard me talk about McKenzie. Me and McKenzie are like sisters. Like we're either hugging and giggling or we're pulling each other's hair because we want to kill each other. We have a really, we have a good relationship like that though. So last month she was at $120,000 and she had like seven days left in the month. And I swear to God, I teach this girl everything. And she's like one of those like, okay, mom, you were right. So she's like, I'm going to shoot for like 140 this month. And I was like, excuse me, what is your rate of run? So she went and calculated her rate of run and it was 170. I said, you would have sold your team $30,000 short if you would have only pushed for 140, McKenzie. She's like, holy shit, guess what? When I got on this Zoom, she's sitting at like 193, okay? your rate of run. You take your volume and you divide it by the date, whatever date it is. So like today is the 25th. So you're going to take your volume, you're going to divide it by 25 and you're going to get a number and you're going to multiply that number by 31. That is your rate of run. That number never fucking lies. Okay. When I was first presented this, I was like a 40 K and I, it was, which is so crazy, my alarm system guy. He is like the number one person for knocking on doors, selling alarms. He's in sales. And he's like, Courtney, let me teach you rate of run. He's one of my best friends. He taught it to me. And I said, yeah, 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 that's cool and all, but that's not very like reliable. He's like, nothing in sales is reliable. It's all, it's all a trend. Okay, Curtis, I'm going to try it. I've tried it month after month after month, and it has propelled my team to go leaps and bounds above that next rank. So if you are a 12K, you're going for 12K, but your rate of run is 15,000, Kaylee needs you to go $15,000 deep this month, okay? If you are sitting at 4K, and you just hit it today, congratulations, but what's your rate of run? Kaylee needs you, your leaders need you to pull out that other thousand, that other 900, every penny counts. When you're just looking at your next rank, you are selling yourself short. How did I know that we were going to do a million dollars in sales? How do I still know that when I'm looking at my number and it scares me a little bit? I calculate my rate of run. Is it realistic? Yeah, we're sitting at going way past a million dollars in sales. So I want any of you on here to know your rate of run tonight because that is so important. It will move your organization way past 200K, way past 80K. Yes. So you are going to take whatever your volume is. And I do this every day. And I'll tell you, I write it down on my planner every single morning and every single night. Okay. I take my volume and I divide it by whatever the date is. So let's do your star 48097. Okay. So star is, oh shit, was that your rate of run star? Somebody give me your volume. Let's just say your volume is 3,000. Okay. And you're pushing for 4K. 3,000 divided by 25 equals times 31 equals. No, that wasn't a very good example. Just kidding. Um, Hold on. Just trying to think. Mine do mine? Yes, what's yours, Kaylee? 
149743. So 149743 divided by 25 times 31. Y'all's rate of run is 185,681. That means if you keep traveling at the speed you're traveling at right now, you would end the month at that. That's too fucking close to miss 200K. So what does that tell you? It doesn't tell you. This number doesn't predict your future. This number says if you go at the speed and at the intensity that you're going at right now, this is where you'll be. That's why I'm asking you, what else can you put on your calendar these next few days? What product can you pull out of your pantry? What credits do you have? What leverage do you have for placement? Don't be popping people to ranks right now. You get them close enough and tell them to meet you the other halfway. I'm telling you, this number um, never lies. This number is a really good indicator for me going, okay, all right, it, it, this, this number doesn't frustrate me and it also doesn't make me feel comfortable. This is like, okay, okay, I know where we're going. So let's just say you're sitting at $11,000. Your rate of run would be 13,640. Do you see why Kaylee needs you to go 13,640? She doesn't need you to go 12K. Is 12K something to be excited about? Absolutely. That's your next rank. But you're you're going to sell yourself that much short, which could in turn keep people from going 4K, stunt some VIP 1600s. When you're pushing for your rate of run with your team every single day, like my team, we don't even share our volume. We share our rate of run. Where's your rate of run? Where's your rate of run? Um, it keeps us growing like crazy. Two months ago, we ended the month at 510. We should end this month well over a million dollars. Like we, that's insane. But we only use that formula. I want to teach everyone that formula so bad. Like if I get to speak at conference, I just want to teach you rate of rent because it changed the game. And I, I've seen it take girls from, you know, just hitting a rank to massive growth, massive, massive growth. Um, and guys, sorry, Jesse. Um, I'm such a tomboy too, if you know me. Like, I'm such a tomboy. Um, I don't know. I could talk to y'all all night. Like, I'm just going to say this. These next six, day, six days, are you willing to sleep a little less, go a little harder, follow up a little bit more? It's going to take every single penny, and it's going to take every single last one of you to make this shit happen. I would tell you that if I was on your team, I wouldn't be in in the month with a credit left in my account. Why is it so important for you to fight as a team for this promotion that's tied to next to Kaylee's name? Because Kaylee can't go 200K by herself. And this is what I call, this is like my favorite thing is I call it the rally. Okay. It's the rally. It's the end of the month rally when you're not quite on track, but damn it, you're going to come in, you're going to slide head first. You're going to be bruised. I promise you, you're going to need stitches, right? You're going to look like a hot mess, but you're going to do it. This is a rally. This right here is when you figure out what the fuck you're made of. This right here is where you realize that you can stretch 60% past where you thought you could. Why is it important for you to rally right now? If you're a day one thriver, like meaning you signed up today or if you're pushing for 80k because you were setting the stage for that next rally you are setting that stage for that next team you were teaching your team what it looks like to pull some shit together that was a stretch but you made it happen because i don't know too many people in this industry that wake up a 200k and, and frankly that's boring okay I don't like that. I like a good challenge. I like to figure out what I'm made of. I, I like to set that bar high. My goals, they're not goals I know I can hit. They are goals that scare me. They are goals that are going to take me stretching. Why? Because the rest of that shit's boring. So rally. You have six whole days. Send those messages that maybe make you feel uncomfortable, right? I'm not telling you to go cold message people. Don't do any weird shit, but go and follow up with that person that's been putting you off. Go stretch yourself. Right now is the time to make magic happen because I promise you, you will teach other people how to do it whenever it is your turn 
to have your name next to 200K. Last thing I'm going to leave you with is I believe that the way our comp plan is set up and the way that our products work and the way that our culture is in this business, that there is absolutely no reason why every single one of you cannot be a 200K. I will say that to anybody. Like, you can't tell me nothing, okay? I believe that anybody can walk. I don't care, you know, male, female, like, um, ethnicity, background. Uh, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. That is so irrelevant. I have people that have felonies on my team that are 80Ks, right? How bad do you want it? That is it. You have got to go look in the mirror and decide right now, maybe you're going 12K this month. Don't even talk to yourself like that. I talked to myself from day one, Courtney, you will be a Lavelle millionaire. Courtney, you will be a Lavelle millionaire. Turn off my food stamps. Courtney, you will be a Lavelle millionaire. Close my daycare, scared as fuck. You will be a Lavelle millionaire. I kept speaking that out loud over and over. I stood on stage with a microphone, looked at Maria Dillard and I said, I'll make a million dollars here. Didn't know how. Didn't know who, it didn't matter. I knew like you couldn't stop me. And so are you hungry? If you're hungry, you will either die starving or you will go fucking feed yourself. Decide what you're gonna do, guys. And I cannot wait for y'all to go 200K. Take whatever you have and run with it these last six days. I love y'all. I am cheering you on. I know Kenza's team is cheering you on, Kaylee. Um, we just talked. She's like, Kaylee's so cute. And I said, I know. She goes, oh, that sounded weird. She's really nice. I was like, no, it's fine. You can say she's cute, Mackenzie. <laughs> she's such a dork. Um, she's like, I just love her. I'm like, yes. And y'all, y'all have got this. Like y'all have got this. You just have to decide. You have to all decide that you're not going to be too busy, too tired, and you're going to be faithful, not fearful. Period. Go make it happen. All right. I could talk to y'all forever. Um, love y'all. I'm really, really proud of y'all. Y'all are like my favorite side sisters ever, ever. Amanda saved my whole career, period. She did. Like when I was like, I'm just going to go. Actually, I was rocking on the floor crying and bawling. And when I reached out to her to get on a Zoom with me and I told my husband, I think I'm just going to go be a greeter at Walmart. And he's like, get the fuck up. Like, what are you doing? Because my sponsor had left. I had a real good cry. And Amanda's like, no girl, like, let's go. So I don't care, like get punched in the stomach, but you better like stand up fucking swinging. Okay, let's go. Y'all got this. I love y'all. Good night. Bye. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Love y'all. Bye. Hey guys, if you are on, thank you so much, Courtney. Oh, she's gone. Okay. Um, let me hit the stop on the recording. Actually, I'm not going to stop it just yet because now that Courtney's kind of exited out, I know some of you guys are hopping off, um, but so those of you that haven't hopped off yet, I mean, are you like on fire? It, it Like, listen, Pekka, I'm like, bitch, I'm talking to you. Are you down for 90 days? Like, what am I crazy? I'm in school. I've got three things due this week. I've got school. You know what I thought the whole time she was sitting there saying this, guys, is today when I thought I was going to die trying to do the last sit-up on the last round when I was in the, she kept on saying your body can do so much more, just your mind, you have to keep on telling it, it can do it. And you guys, I kept on pushing and I kept on going and I had one hell of a workout. And it just made me, when she was saying that, I was like, you know what, you can do so much more than what you think you are capable of. And I want each one of you guys to realize like, what if you did? What if the next 90 days, you got to listen, some of you guys work full time. I just told you I've got, I'm in school right now. I start the hospital on Monday and you know what? I'm like 90 days. I'm all in. I'll get up earlier. I'll stay up later. Why? Because I know what it's going to do for my team. My checks are good. And like Courtney said, she could sit back on Tuesdays and collect it. That's not what fires me up. And listen, I want you each to understand this too. You're going to all show up for your business differently. You're going to work your business differently. Okay. And I want you to realize this is that even if you're working your business differently, I can honestly sit here and tell you, I have slapped on my stories. And 
she's sitting there like every morning she posts this and you know what it's like yep i've been posting but i haven't been posting my three steps why i mean people know i thrive and people see me thriving but what if i upped my story of posting that three step every single morning what if every night before i went to bed i posted um, about going to sleep, setting my alarm and ready to kick ass for the next day because I'm motivated. I'm powerful. I'm strong. I can do this. And I want you guys to realize this too. And this is the last time I say, it, it, she kind of touched on this and you know, I know some of you guys are not on Kaylee's team and, and like, and even if you are on Kaylee's team and like you're a little bit further away from like hitting your neck goal and you're like, why am I going to make this big push? Because I'm going to tell you something when you have a team, and, and anybody that knows Kaylee anyways is going to know this. When you have a team and you all do something together, it is not just about that one person. And when you think it is just about that one person, you are not in an abundance mindset. It is not just about Kaylee to go 200K. It is not just about Kaylee to go to, and I'm going to tell you this, Kaylee's not the kind of leader that when she hits 200K, she's done and she checks out. She's going to be like, who's going 80K? Who's going 40K? Who's going next? Who's coming with me? Who's going 200K next? Where are we going? What's happening, right? So um, I want each one of you guys to realize this. I want you, whatever your goals are, you know, we did dream boards last Monday. Some of you guys never did it, okay? I want you to set a solid plan of where it is that you wanna go, what it is that you wanna do. I mean, Courtney didn't say this on the call, but she just bought her husband a $64,000 truck in cash. I know that they just bought a boat last year too. Okay. And I, I want you guys to think of this and it's not about what they're spending the money on. Or it, it's, it's not about the money. Okay. It literally comes down to the freedom and the blessings and half the people, all these people that are going 200 K on our team, they weren't even on our team in December, 2018 when her uplines left. She kept showing up and she attracted the people by her actions. So I want you to think like that. Listen, I'm not perfect. Every day I don't, I'm not all sunshine and rainbows. And sometimes I drop the F-bomb and tell people exactly what's on my mind. That's okay. That's who I am. You're not going to see Kayla Fox going and dropping the F-bomb on her timeline. Okay. I love Kayla. We're different. With that said, Kayla's an incredible leader. Haley's not going to probably go drop the F-bomb either, okay? <laughs> but you see, there's different personality types. I want each one of you guys to know, you don't need to be an Amanda Arnett. You don't need to be a Kaylee Creep. You don't need to be a Courtney Glazier. You just need to show up for you. And you need to show up because if you don't show up, you're not going to meet those people that you need to change their lives and that need you to change their lives. They need you in your, their life to know that they can do it. That they themselves can have anything that they're willing to work for. And anybody that tells you that doesn't have a work ethic. Anyone that tells you that you, it can't be done are those only willing not to do it. And I want you guys to know that right now. The only ones that can tell you that it can't be done are those that are not willing to do it and not willing to put in the work to do it, okay? And um, yeah, Kaylee, um, Kaylee's team, if you could just stay on the Zoom uh, after I hit the, I'm going to hit the stop on the record. Um, everybody else, you can hop off. I'm going to do some rally stuff and ideas with Kaylee's team. If you've got to hop off, totally cool. Kaylee can get back in touch with you. Um, but uh, yeah, I know we don't have an event scheduled for every day for the next six days. So um, those of you guys that are still left, I want to help you. Um, and Kaylee, we have a... Kaylee, we have an opportunity Zoom tomorrow at 5.30 if you want to send up the links. Oh, that's perfect. That'd time. be 8.30 Eastern time. Yeah, I, I have the webinar link. And Twin, um, I actually want to do a Zoom with you and Jackie in, um, over in, in a couple days too, by the way. Um, because sure. you guys have a couple people um, uh, going to be going 200K here in the next corner or so. <laughs> very close. <laughs> so very close. So um so I, I like to talk with you guys too and get some game planning. But um yay and thank you so much twin. Anybody else that has an event scheduled that would be open to people like coming like 
put it out there because we just share them guys. We just share these live events anytime they're popping up because truly it helps all of us. And now with watch parties, it's always like, you know, so I'm super excited. And like I said, anybody that's on Kaylee's team, please stick around. Anybody that just wants to listen, you're totally welcome to that too, if you want. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited. I'm going to stop this recording.